welcome everybody to Transitioning to Telehealth, Five Vital Features of Virtual Care Using Charm Telehealth. We are super grateful to have you all with us today. And I just want to give a warm welcome to our presenter, Dr. Igor Schwartzman, and the product marketing engineer at Charm, Ranjani Rangan. We're grateful to have you both with us here today. We've also got the CNDA's Executive Director, Kathy Kahns. So now I would like to introduce Dr. Igor Schwartzman. I'm going to read his bio and then we'll get started. So Dr. Schwartzman has over 20 years of experience in the field of natural health, medicine, and research in the academic and private sectors of the health industry and business consulting. He's an expert in lifestyle, preventative medicine, and natural health. His work has been published in numerous scientific journals, including the American Journal of Respiratory Care and Medicine and the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. He's a founder of a multidisciplinary clinic, Whole Family Wellness Center in Portland, Oregon, soon to be in Vermont on the East Coast. Dr. Schwartzman's background includes consulting for small and large healthcare clinics and telemedicine groups. He has extensive experience and a deep understanding of workflow, operations, and systems for both conventional and functional medicine practices. His work is focused on the design, integration, implementation of practice management systems, as well as delivery of e-health solutions for brick and mortar clinics and telemedicine groups. And uh, Dr. Schwartzman is keeping his license in Oregon and in Vermont, so he's going to be using telemedicine himself. He's an expert, and we're so grateful to have you with us. Take it away, Dr. Schwartzman. Uh, thank you, CNDA. I'm grateful for the invitation and charm, of course, as well. Um, so I will share. I know we have a finite number of minutes. We have, I want to give you an overview, a sense of how I've used Charm to my benefit, and some of our colleagues have used it as well uh, over a, a long period of time. And um, I have, I recognize some of you on this call, so uh, hello to those of you who I know, and hello to those of you I don't know. So um, let me share my screen with you. All right, I assume everyone can see this. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, first of all, I have no disclosures. Um, I am a private practice physician. I've been practicing uh, in Portland, Oregon, and I have a multidisciplinary clinic, or I should say used to. It's being broken down as we speak. I'm 100% virtual um, and I've been practicing virtual medicine actually before it was even a thing. Um, so the transition was very easy in some ways and very natural for me since uh, COVID actually hit. Um, I think charm makes it easy and charm makes it very efficient and you really can do this all on your own. And I'm gonna share with you uh, five vital features and also some of the features that I actually think um, will make it just simpler for you to consider this as an option. Um, I love technology. I have no background in technology. I've built websites. I've broken them down. So it's really just a, something I use technology to my, uh, I, I, from the standpoint of, of a user, but I also just have a, a genuine and curiosity and sense of interest in it. Um, as Karen mentioned, I've consulted for small groups, brick and mortar, but also uh, telemedicine groups, and uh, a lot of our colleagues, naturopathic and conventional doctors alike. So one of the important things that I actually want to emphasize is as you're considering um, embarking on a virtual practice, it's really important to think about all aspects of a virtual office. And interestingly enough, there are a few things to consider. Background lighting. In fact, mine is not ideal today. And I think that makes a huge impact. If you look at Karen's uh, background, there's a lot of light, it's bright. It's important for the patient to see us, 
fully and to see our eyes. And I think it's really invaluable. Uh, camera. Currently, I am um, I'm using something called Logitech. I, again, these are just my shared recommendations. It's $69, I think, on Amazon. Um, it's a really nice, simple camera, and it offers you um, better quality. Phone number. Of course, you can have a, an actual phone, or you can use your cell phone, and there are different applications that you can use to block your phone numbers and to make it easier. Doximity, for example, is one of the apps. Um, you can also, there's one called, um, I apologize, I'm blanking out, but there, there, there are a, a number of different ones that allow you to use a virtual number, but give you an option to call your, from your own phone number. So cost savings uh, for maintaining phone numbers, so you only have a cell phone instead of having a landline and a cell phone. Um, a microphone, a microphone headset. So I am currently using a headset. I love headsets because I'm able to just use it simply. It's inexpensive. I also have this little guy. It's called a Yeti. It's how I record all of my webinars. It's how I record all of my uh, videos and so on. I think it's, I forget how much it is, maybe $99. Really good quality. It's a USB driven microphone. You can also communicate with patients the same way using Charm with Yeti. It's an awesome one. Pen and paper, self-explanatory. I apologize if I'm simplifying things, but this is really an important part of creating a virtual office. A scanner, I have a scanner. Um, it's called ScanSnap iX500. It's a few years old, life-changing. Um, my office is paperless. I imagine if you're thinking virtual care, virtual telehealth, telemedicine, you really want to think virtual. You want to eliminate paper, you want to save trees. And say you get a stack of documentation that came from another office, what are you going to do with it? And you're not going to file it, scan it, it scans, right, it's next to me, that's why I'm pointing. Uh, it scans about 50 pages in two minutes, double-sided, also color included. I think it was $400 on Amazon, it might be cheaper now, but life-changing, scan snap, IX500 or similar. Online faxing. Charm integrates faxing. It's not one of the vital features that I'm going to share with you, but it is awesome. It's, it's just phenomenal. And I highly recommend having an online fax. I use my fax. There are a gazillion other faxes that are HIPAA compliant. And, but then again, Charm's integrated feature is phenomenal because what happens is when you receive a fax or when you send a fax out, Everything can be done within the individual patient's uh, dashboard or, or profile, if you would. And of course, a sit-stand desk is something to consider because you are going to get tired of sitting. All right, those are the basics for any given virtual office. And I think there, this is where I'm sitting currently for the time being. Um, so natural light is coming through from the window. Um, it's a bit cloud. It's a bit what it looks like right now in Portland, a little cloudy. Um, and so on the left hand side, you see I have my fax, I have my microphone, my camera is above MacBook, I've got light, pen, and paper. That's literally what you're looking at. Um, I thought I would share that just to give you a sense of what it looks like from my perspective. So, why did I choose Charm? I didn't choose Charm because somebody told me. I didn't choose Charm because I heard about it on the news. This was eight years ago. I chose Charm eight years ago because I, was, I made the decision that I want to save trees and I want to go paperless. And as I mentioned earlier, I, am not, I have no technology background, but I know how to use it. And I wanted to find something that was user-friendly and that I could literally teach a monkey to use, although we know that monkeys are quite bright. So, uh, I, but you get the picture. I really wanted to be able to teach any one of my employees, former employees at this point, to use it. And I wanted to teach people quickly. And so it is user-friendly. It's literally, it doesn't require any um, 
any training to no technology. It's cost-effective to date. It's probably still the most cost-effective platform out there. And I have um, investigated many competitors. I don't need to name any because probably many of you know some of them, but literally I probably selected out of a dozen or more um, and I laid out pros and cons and I landed on it eight years ago and I never looked back and it's still think the most rocking platform. Um, and no charm is not, um, uh, uh, it's it, yes. Charm is constantly evolving. It's not static. It, it is flexible. It literally adapts or you can adapt it to your own workflow. And I think that's imperative to really think about as you're creating your own sense of a virtual practice because if you're thinking about virtual practice or if you are currently in your own virtual space you want to rely as little on an assistant as possible and so you want to be able to have some automation and the last and a really important thing that i really appreciate is that it is naturopathic medicine functional medicine integrative medicine friendly and there is a, a key component of it that I will share with you as part of um, the few essential features, and that's why I think it's um, that's why I think it's it's naturopathic and integrative medicine friendly. It's an all-in-one platform, literally is. You really don't need a whole lot outside of it. Uh, and I I have seen it evolve, grow. I've been able to uh, maybe be one of the early adopters and i have had an opportunity to share some feedback with them and they're always help um, open to feedback i think you can always rely on submitting any additional ideas or functions or features that you think would be helpful but there's one important thing that i want to remind all of you if you're making suggestions please keep in mind that you want to be sharing feedback and suggestions that can apply to everyone not specific to you can you please change the font because it's the font i love it's it really needs to apply to all of us and so that's something to keep in mind uh, but again I, I think they're open to all suggestions all ideas and yes it can take time for them to really implement but do know that they are keeping track of suggestions um, if you look at this diagram, this really is something that I honed in when I was selecting Charm. And it was all about, I need to make sure that Charm and the EMR that I'm choosing is a complete practice management solution. And so I really wanted to make sure that it really offered everything I needed. Now, keep in mind, eight years ago, it didn't have some certain features like merchant or credit card processing, or um, what else? It didn't have full script integration. It didn't have a few key components that they now have. And so this is absolutely brilliant to be able to have a, a, a platform that really integrates all of those features. Can you master them overnight? Not overnight, but you can pretty much be assured that you will be able to learn them quickly if you truly begin implementing Charm in your own practice. And I love all of the features that you see, electronic prescriptions. Um, I, you know, I've, I've focused a lot on um, thyroid disorders over the years. And so when I'm sending a script for levothyroxine, I love the fact that I don't have to call the pharmacy. I don't have to fax. I just submit it electronically. It's an amazing feature. And um, keep in mind that some compounding pharmacies and some smaller pharmacies uh, are not part of the integrated electronic prescription platform. It actually doesn't have anything to do with charm. It has to do with, um, is it? All scripts, sure scripts, one of those scripts. And Ranjani, I apologize, I can't remember which one it is, but it's one of the um, integrated uh, uh, 
platforms that plugs into Charm and all the information that goes between the pharmacy and Charm's electronic prescription function goes through a, a middle sort of middle person, if you would. And so cer certain small pharmacies aren't able to or are not participating in their electronic prescriptions. So you're not going to find some smaller pharmacies like your local compounding pharmacy, perhaps. So just keep that in mind. But overall, all pharmacies around the country are game. I love messaging. I think text, texting and messaging options are phenomenal. Um, you know, reminders for people's appointments, texts. Everybody's using texts. I do not text with my patients. You can, you can choose to. There are apps you can use. I don't. Um, I don't. I, I, I love to keep that boundary between uh, my patients and myself. And this is where all boundaries could be broken if you don't pay attention of how you communicate with patients. And so, but text reminders are excellent. Um, Faxing, I mentioned, I love the fact that it's integrated. You can simply send and receive faxes in Charm. Um, integrated labs, there are a number of labs that literally integrate into Charm's actual portal into your own platform. So I have LabCorp and uh, um, that's actually LabCorp Quest. There are a few others that integrate, not all of them integrate. Yes, there are associated costs of integrating labs. Now, integrated labs means you can send a lab request electronically out and you can receive a result back in. Those are electronic integrations where everything gets ported directly into the patient's chart. It doesn't mean that while you're charting, you that you cannot create a lab requisition that you either fax or give to the patient or share with the patient. So there's a distinction between something that's already integrated, a lab that's integrated into your own account versus something that isn't. You can still create and receive labs, lab results, I mean, however they will be faxed to you. Um, and it, you will just have to have an extra manual step where you upload your re results and reports into your uh, respective patient's chart. I love the fact that there is a billing, all accounting and billing is uh, associated with the individual patient account. So I think that's imperative. They have something called Optum uh, that's built into Charm. There's an associated fee with that. So just remember, as I'm describing some of these features, Charm has created, it's a very modular system, which means you can select features and options that you like. And you can unselect features and options that you don't like or don't want or choose not to have or choose to have. So it's an a la carte sort of uh, idea. And I, I think it's, it's brilliant because it's not, you know, some of the competitors may charge $100, $200 per provider or whatever it may be. And they, they make this um, an all-encompassing platform and you have access to everything. This gives you choices and options, which I think is, is just a better business model. Again, um, it's just a preference. Uh, I can't see what I, I had written here. Um, multiple facilities. Multiple facilities means if you have, if you're a brick and mortar clinic and you have a clinic, and I imagine most of you are in, in California, if you have a clinic, let's say in San Francisco and you have a clinic in Los Angeles, a facility literally means two separate locations. But those two separate locations, or they call them facilities, can be and are under your own charm account. So you literally can switch between facilities. So it's a nice, um, robust feature as well. Five vital features of Charm. So these are the five I think are really amazing. And I think they're, they, that's what makes Charm charming. <laughs> Video, audio integration, HIPAA compliant. Yes, it is Zoom 
Yes, Zoom is integrated into the back end of Charm. It's the HIPAA compliant Zoom. Zoom has different, as Karen called it, but it has different uh, tiers and different bells and whistles with different tiers. And so the one that's integrated into Charm is, is HIPAA compliant. Now, what that means is it isn't where you manually go into your own Zoom account. And I have my own personal Zoom account, which allows me to conduct these sorts of webinars myself. Uh, yes, it's a paid version. It's separate. But the Zoom that's integrated into Charm is where you have a scheduled appointment, you begin your appointment, and the video pops up. You don't have any additional things to do as far as Charm goes or as far as Zoom goes. So um, that's built in. I love merchant processing. I think it's life-changing. Um, the, the, the company, the brand that they use is called Bluefin. It's a separate entity. Yes, you do have to have an account with Bluefin, but the integration is on the back end. And Bluefin and Charm talk to one another. They integrate Bluefin into your account. It can be across different facilities. So Bluefin is the way to go. And, um, you know, I, when I had a brick and mortar clinic, I actually had two merchant accounts and I had uh, a standalone that was, you know, what probably what some of you are used to having like a big swiper machine. And I had Bluefin and uh, I eventually transitioned to Bluefin and I never looked back. And uh, if you're just, just a little uh, tidbit when you are speaking to Bluefin and maybe you have a merchant account and you have amazing rates, let them compare, let them battle it out. Uh, they usually will flex their muscle. And, um, and so try and negotiate and renegotiate every few months or whatever it may be. So a little bit of tidbit there. As I mentioned, the ERX function is phenomenal. It saves me time. I never have to, you know, patients will call the pharmacy where whatever pharmacy, hey, I need my refill on levothyroxine, what have you, uh, and the pharmacy sends you an electronic request for a refill. You are on vacation, and maybe Friday afternoon you decided to check back into your portal, into your platform. Oh, you have five refills that need to be taken care of. Five clicks, and you're done. It's no no administrative time. Billing and accounting all in one. It's just astounding to be able to have everything in one place. There's a common question um, that I've received over many years from colleagues and from other groups. Well, but Charm also integrates with QuickBooks. Yes, it does. I don't integrate it because I think of uh, QuickBooks as my accounting and financial entity on its own. So uh, that's where you keep track of your expenses, you keep track of your banking and everything related to your finances. However, you can integrate it with Charm. I don't have any experience on how it looks, but I know it, they've done, a, a, some of the colleagues who have shared their experiences, they like it. So um, I don't, I never found it to be important to integrate because everything related to my patients, all I care is that everything is in one place. Charm is my practice management. QuickBooks is my financial accounting and, and uh, management. So just a, a little feedback on that, a little uh, shared experience. And Fullscript. Um, I know some of you use Fullscript. I imagine some of you use Wellevate and, and others. Fullscript is through Natural Partners, and of course, Fullscript was acquired by Natural Partners, and Fullscript integrates into Charm. You are charting, you are doing your, your chart notes, and when I think about inventory, I think about, I don't want inventory, it's expensive, I don't want to keep inventory, so I'm using, and I'm virtual, this is my office, there's no inventory behind me, so we're thinking, how can we have the ease of use and uh, the ease of fulfillment and recommendations and Fullscript is literally integrated into 
your own account and it gives people, you literally just make a prescription and it goes straight to full script. It's awesome. Just, just a really nice vital feature. Again, um, I know some of you, probably many of you, and me included, have had inventories and have these big giant medicinaries. There's a lot of loss of revenue and there's a lot of locked up revenue. Full script is a way to go, in my humble opinion. I also wanted to share other vital features that I think are important to mention. They're not five of the top ones, but they are vital. Um, I think labs, as I mentioned, are essential. I find them helpful, particularly, uh, I'll give you an example. So if I send a patient to LabCorp and they get their labs done, when the results come in, they literally just pour it directly into the patient's chart. That's, that requires no admin time. That requires no involvement upon my behalf. It's just really streamlined. So I think streamlining efficiency and being effective in your practice. I want to spend, my goal with telemedicine was to spend as little time clicking buttons on the computer and as much time focusing on the person in front of me. And yes, through being in two different spaces, just like we all are, uh, but really focusing on the person. Uh, I think the facts is, a, is not a... Um, really nice feature and most of all big three four exclamation marks patient portal and i think that is really amazing because it really gives um gives us a, a way um you know i don't use my personal email or any any other email with patients i tell them go into your portal and communicate with me you have access to me I want, you, I want people to be able to communicate directly. And the other really important thing or invaluable thing about having a patient portal is that all the information, all the questions and anything related to their care is in their individual chart. That you cannot beat. Okay, let's take, what time is it? Okay, I, um, I think we're doing great on time. I would like to give you, again, I'm obviously not here to teach you how Charm um, is set up. I'm not, we, we just don't have the time. Um, I will, um, I'll share this link. I have taught many of our um, colleagues, conventional doctors, integrative functional medicine doctors, ehrguide.com. I created, it's an online course that I actually, uh, it's currently not open, but I've had hundreds of students on it. And it, it's, we just don't have enough time to really learn um, everything about charm. But I think to give you a sense of, I'm just going to move this, um, to give you a sense of what charm looks like. So Charm is, again, user-friendly. It's easy to use. This right here that you're looking at is your home screen. It's your launch pad. By the way, this is a test account, so there are no real patient names, um, so that if any of you have those questions, this is just a demo account. Um, right at the top, you'll see Charm, from time to time, makes announcements. And there's one at the top. It gives you this yellow stripe and gives you an announcement, which you can close out. Um, but this ultimately is everything you need. It's simple and it's easy to navigate. And so um, the, the, the basic functionality of Charm is, well, obviously your patients. And if you have, this is an important question that people ask me. If you have another system and you have hundreds, if not thousands of people, what do you do? Well, you can't take patients from one platform and shift them to another. However, you can import basic demographics, addresses, phone numbers, and it actually gives you this, this function here. Um, on the right-hand side, there's a, there's a way to, to port a bunch of people using uh, something called 
a CSV file or other types of files. And, the, and it's basically just the idea of a spreadsheet. Um, so that's good news. That's really, really nice to be able to just import patients that way. Num question number two that I get asked, um, what about, I have paper charts. Well, the way I started eight years ago is I said I have several file cabinets. I'm going to leave those behind and I'm going to start anew. If I need somebody's information, I'm going to take it out of the file cabinet. And I'm going to use my scan snap that I shared with you. I'm going to scan it. And that's what I, I slowly did that. Not, you're not going to be able to scan thousands of charts and thousands of documents. It's just not cost effective, not practical, and I don't recommend it. But I do recommend having a select a date and you know that on a particular date, you're going to start uh, implementing your electronic medical records. And if you have another platform, well, technically you're supposed to have access to that for life because you're, you're supposed to have records for at least five, seven years uh, that you're keeping them. But with electronic medical records, you can now keep them, you know, for many more years. So at the same time, you want to designate a date and you start using a new platform. Um, the, the nice thing about having all your patients in this portal, in this platform, is two, two actual reasons for it. Number one, you can use the scheduling function. I have some, uh, I, I, I only use, this is a common question, do you use the calendar function in Charm or do you use some third party uh, scheduling? Because some, some of us like certain features and have certain desires for functionality of scheduling and that sort of thing and marketing purposes. And, I use the calendar function that's integrated into Charm because what happens is when you use a patient by simply having them scheduled, what happens here is when you, the information gets pulled from within the platform, um, right in this field uh, where you see where my cursor is, where it says phone call, when you enable the telehealth option in Charm, it gives you an option to do the video call, video consult with the patient. And that, it eliminates extra platforms like a third party, you know, a, a standalone Zoom or some other Dux, um, uh, not Duximity, is it Duximity? Um, anyway, um, some other third party integration. So I use, Charms integrated scheduling. I've always done it. It's robust and highly recommended. Um, by the way, right here at the top right or at the top of the screen, it says enable telehealth. Again, this is a demo version. When you enable telehealth, do you see where it says free until July 2020? Um, so thereafter, it's $20 per month. Highly worth it. Just worth it. You're going to pay more in having standalone Zoom per year uh, or you know, some version of that and charms fully integrated with Zoom. Um, so scheduling, I use it, uh, it's integrated. Prescriptions, I mentioned prescriptions, everything comes electronically. Uh, pharmacy requests come through, ERX sent, everything gets uh, ported in here and funneled through here. Labs, I mentioned as well. Labs are integrated and they get, you receive lab results and then you can send your own lab result, results out. Now, if they're manually imported, it's simply a PDF. Uh, so just as easy. I, I definitely have that extra step that I do with certain laboratories. It takes, excuse me, absolutely no time. Um, images, uh, you know, if you need to, um, create a, an image order that's done within Charm. You can fax it out. You can receive faxes in. Documents has to do with any past medical records, any records, any forms, anything that you want to keep. Now, something important about uh, documents is, 
an individual chart, and I'll show it to you in a second, for a patient has all documents, anything related to the individual. So any, any communication that you want to keep, anything that you've ever received and you decided to scan, that gives you an option to keep in the chart, in the individual chart. So think of Charm as um, a robust organizer for your patient that you literally could not imagine having two admin assistants and have that amount of uh, uh, order and organization. And there are, you know, tasks you can, if you have an administrative assistant who maybe is virtual, um, or you have an administrative assistant, maybe they're even next to you, you can have tasks that you assign to other members or colleagues or any of that. Um, of course, billing and um, also an analytics as well as inventory, if you maintain uh, some inventory as well. So, um, this gives you a really nice uh, way that you can use Charm uh, to its full extent. Now, let me back up to the very beginning and let me um, point out one important thing and write it down. Just keep it in your mind. Anytime you start a new account, you are the administrator. So don't let Susan, who may be your office manager, be the administrator. Don't let someone who is your office assistant be the administrator. I am only sharing this from my own perspective, but I would just want you to have that maybe feedback. I, I think it's invaluable. Yes, it's true you can... Um, give up and change administrative privileges to another person within the platform. It's not about control, but it is about you having full possession or full uh, oversight or administration over your own account. Um, there's no other reason other than you should really be the administrator if you are in fact the practice founder, medical director, or what have you just as a side note. Um, and Charm has uh, a lot of built-in features, which actually is right under settings here. And um, as the administrator, again, this is a, 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 an account that's um, a demo account, but as the administrator, you have the amount of privileges that you have is just a little bit more. Uh, your colleagues or your office administrators, they may not be able to see certain aspects of maybe financials or certain aspects of the number of visits that you have or whatever you decide. In fact, um, right in the section of facility here, uh, they have something called, in, called roles. And roles gives you an option to uh, give privileges and remove privileges. Um, so that's quite, um, quite nice. Questionnaires has to do with your intakes. I have no paper intakes. I haven't done that even when I had a brick and mortar practice. No paper, no paper. And the compliance from patients has been 99.5% if I can put a number on it. And the reason is it gives people an option to fill out paperwork. What happens? And I know probably all uh, 70 of you on this call uh, have had at least, at least one patient, one time where they show up two minutes before the appointment. Oh, I haven't done my paperwork. That's frustrating, right? Because they just ate their time, your time, you're delayed. And out of the respect of your next patient, you just, you're late, um, or whatever it may be, whatever the case is. Uh, giving people an opportunity to fill out questionnaires virtually online is amazing. It's just, it gives you that flexibility. Plus, when you're setting up a new patient, the patient is able to 
uh, have a portal right away. And I'll show you in a moment what a portal looks like. So questionnaires are on, uh, can be done on, uh, virtually. Documents I mentioned, you can store a ton of information that are related to the individual patient, related to your practice, maybe you have handouts. Um, patient communication that is restricted or not restricted with patients. You can have a, a way to create templates. Templates are related to your encounters. They're related to uh, being able to create uh, encounter, by the way, is, a, is, is synonymous with a chart note. So this really gives you a way to create lots and lots of templates. Highly recommend templates, time saver. Yes, you're going to spend a ton of time creating them in the first little bit when you start your own account or if you already have one, but templates, use templates, templates. I hope I made that uh, clear, loud and clear. Full script integration is available here. Labs, we talked about. ERX function is right here. That's how you enable it by clicking ERX. Gives you a way to fill out their paperwork and off uh, and running. Um, you're able to, if you have an inventory, you know, that's where you would essentially use the inventory setting. If you don't, again, full script is the way to do it. Lots of options under billing. Here's Bluefin here. Um, and they have this new feature of billing packages. So if you decided to sign someone up for 12 visits, you can now have a billing package. Um, I mentioned tasks. This is your messaging system. Um, Charm Telehealth, that's, that's the option to enable telehealth. Uh, so security, audit trails, there's the, quite a lot of features, and just for the sake of time, I'm not able to go through the individual. But I want to go back to the, to the virtual here. Um, when you're in the individual patient's chart, this is what it looks like. Now, again, demo doesn't have a ton of information, but this is a patient's dashboard. When we're talking about a dashboard, it means they're just basic information. When we're talking about patient details, it encompasses a lot of their demographics, their medical history, which has to do with um, social history, family history, procedures, and so on. I, and um, questionnaires are the intakes that patients fill out. Insurance tab has to do with their health insurance. And then the pharmacy tab has to do with either an ERX pharmacy or a custom pharmacy. Um, encounters has to do with their chart notes that you complete, uh, diagnoses, medications this will have your medication history as well as supplements allergies and so on so think of going left to right so there's there's a very clear delineation and structure to how charm has created this it's, it's essentially a very um a deliberate database that gives you a lot of functionality um, appointment history will be all within charm as well messages related to the individual patient will be ported in here and um, if i go to the central messaging system right here it's actually so imagine a global inbox and then imagine a an inbox that's related to the individual patient that would be so global and then anything related to the patient goes into the patient's dashboard into the individual patient's um, profile. So again, there's there's a clear structure to every aspect of Charm's build out. Um, billing is here. Audit trails. Um, what else can I point out here? Um, receipts, claims. You know anything related to the billing function. Now, this is your perspective this is the doctor perspective this is your office manager perspective with certain restrictions if you have any what does the patient perspective look like that's an important question that many people ask um, and this is a test account this is actually a test account within my sort of physical brick and mortar old you know that's to be dissolved uh, structure but this is what it would look like 
Um, so it kind of has a similar outline to it. And um, as a practice, as, a, as an administrator or as a, as a practice manager, you have a way to um, turn off and on certain features, literally features, that you may or may not want to share with even the patients. Um, for example, if you didn't want to share with them, I don't know, uh, certain, certain lab, uh, labs or documents, or you can turn things on and off. This is a place where a patient can also request appointments or they can self-schedule appointments by going to the appointment function. Um, they can also, you can see it has a similar structure to it, very, very similar to the provider perspective as well. And so, um, except obviously they have clinical summary, which is something you might share with them, their appointments, uh, their history of appointments, they can, again, request appointments. Patients also have the messaging system. They have their billing system where they, because I have my Bluefin integrated, let's say this was a um, uh, $20 due amount. You can pay all your dues. And this is actually, well, this is what, this is how that patient would pay. The other really amazing thing about Bluefin is you can have a patient pay from their email address with a click of a couple of buttons. So it's not just within the portal, their portal. It can also be done um, on the other side of things. Um, this is their you know, health history intake that they may have done. So this is, you know, this is me playing around with uh, certain, uh, certain questionnaires. But this is essentially all the questionnaires that they would have completed for you or intake forms. And by the way, at the top here, one of the questions that doctors ask is, um, what happens if a patient that I'm seeing already has an account with somebody else or a different facility or you know someone else who has charm? Well, there's a drop-down menu right in the upper corner and it gives you other providers from this drop-down menu that may have had or may have charm accounts as well. So it really is designed for your patient to be able to uh, simply have one single login for different doctors, if you would, even if, if the doctor is no longer, or if you're not no longer seeing the patient. Um, the other thing that I love about Charm is, here's my personal website. Um, so it's, again, you know, I built my own website, and if they said schedule, this is live, this is what it would look like. So let's say I'm an established patient and I want to see Dr. Schwartzman. I would go and click select on the time, my desired time. And when you, um, it, it's, do you see how it says book your steps in three easy steps? That's literally what it's about. Is you click, you select your date range, and are you an existing patient? Yes or no. Do you know your record ID? Record ID has to do with the patient ID. So most people don't know that. Are you an existing patient? Yes or no. If it's a new patient, uh, they would s literally fill out this form, uh, this, the, these three fields, click next, and it gives them an option. I currently have an option set up where they have to store their card in order for, for them to be seen by me. I'm not charging the card even though you have an option to charge right away, but you are now seeing a patient whose card is on file. And um, that's, that's nice because it requires no administrative assistant. I do not have an administrative assistant. I, I'm solo. I am on my own and I'm choosing that. I've had employees for many years. I'm trying not to do that at this moment in time because I'm really trying to automate my entire virtual experience and spend as little time as possible. So I teach people how to do it as well. And I think uh, having used Charm all these years and having taught colleagues how to use it, it really is an amazing platform. And I think um, I couldn't say enough good things about it because it's really, 
it's made my uh, practice really effective. I think it's given me freedom. Uh, as was said earlier, I am I am moving from the West Coast to back to the East Coast. And I'm maintaining my telemedicine practice uh, in Oregon, and I'm going to probably um, just continue making make no changes there won't be anything that is going to look different except the difference in time zone um i also want to i i again i want to be mindful of and respect your time and my time uh and everybody else's time because i know you're probably uh, quite busy and want to see your patients um so there's a, web, uh, a facebook group that i've maintained since i don't even know when um, for a little while, there are 553 members. This is for naturopathic, integrative doctors, and acupuncturists. You cannot, please do not send your office managers, your administrative assistants. No, um, it is not meant for that. It's only meant for providers. The only reason I say that is because provider, uh, excuse me, office managers, administrative assistants come and go, providers stay. And so I really want this to be exclusive to providers only. And I think we benefit greatly. Uh, it's largely NDs and MDs. There are a few acupuncturists. It's, it's free. I'm not promoting anything for sale. Um, but yes, I have promoted my own webinar on it. But otherwise, it's, it's really meant to be a collective uh, experience for all of us. Now, I know there are a bunch of questions coming in, and maybe I should um, offer that this time for that, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Schwartzman. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> a lot of really great information. Uh, if you have a question about Charm Health for Dr. Schwartzman, please click on participants at the bottom of your screen, and then you can click on raise Hand. So you can raise your virtual hand so I know that you have a question and then I can unmute you or you can unmute yourself and you can ask that question directly. So let's go to Dr. Emily Deshiel. Hey, Dr. Deshiel. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so I had, I had written my question in there and I, am, I apologize if you did address this, but you mentioned that you can keep your portals active for more than one doctor that uses charm? Because this has been an issue for us in the past, and I'm wondering if you can help me understand how to set that up if a patient is a new to me but has already a charm account with another doctor. So usually when they are scheduling with you, let's say they're a new patient to you. I assume I understand the question correctly. They're a new yes. patient to you, yes. and perhaps they've seen me. Um, there's a way for them... Uh, to be added to their existing, essentially, account. And um, it gives the patient a way to be able to use a drop-down menu, if you see my screen still. Um, from the drop-down menu, they will have a, ch a way to either see me or somebody else um, within, within Charm, their own personal account, but not necessarily within the same, uh, obviously, practice so it's it happens at the time that you or your uh, administrative assistant is scheduling the patient mm -hmm. oh i guess dr michelle you're you're okay. muted but muted. hopefully that was it all right um mana sembi go ahead oops Hi, thank you. Okay, this is a simple question. I am NMS4 graduating next month. We will not get our license until end of September. Is it possible to join your Facebook group so we can start the education? Yes, I have allowed uh, a few, a number of students in. So yes, please, please join. Thank you. All right, any other questions for Dr. Schwartzman while we have him on the line? Now's your chance. If any other questions come up after this webinar, you're more than welcome to um, email, uh, email them over. Okay, let's go to Rebecca Perino. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Rebecca. Terrific. Hi, Igor. So nice to see your face. 
So my question is about our uh, compounding pharmacy that we have in our brick and mortar practice. We mm -hmm. have a, a uh, it's a considerable a part of our inventory and our, uh, you know, we, we use it with most patients, botanical medicine in a, in a liquid tincture form. So currently we, um, we, uh, print labels from a label maker, slap them on the bottle, and then we slap it in a paper chart, which we've been doing for 13 years. Um, and I've been shopping for EMR for about eight years. So <laughs> hopefully we make the move one of these days. What, how would that uh, part of our practice fit into charm? Like how, where, where would we, how would we do that? Especially considering the time it would take to um, itemize each ingredient in a botanical formula? It's a great question. Um, and I've seen this question come up a lot. And I do not believe that the way I can imagine um, charm being used within that construct, that it would actually be easy to do. Um, so unfortunately, because of the nature of the compounding pharmacy that you described, tinctures and mixtures that you create, it really isn't um, an efficient methodology at using charm. It's really meant for, you know, a standalone bottle. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, I, I just have not figured out a solution, even though this is a common question, mm -hmm. flower essences or tinctures. Mm -hmm. and, so unfortunately, I, I don't think that charm what about, is... Mm -hmm. What about a photograph? Like having a, uh, a camera in the back pharmacy and photographing a label. Would there be a way to, to upload a photograph? Not to take too much more time on this. Um, I, I can't imagine that that would be an easy solution. I think you might spend more time, uh, unfortunately, and I don't know if you'll save time doing that per se. Um, the easiest and the quickest answer would be if you created uh, X formula, Y formula, and Z formula, and you had simply, um, you know, had it as your inventory, and that would be listed within the inventory in Charm. Um, so not an easy solution, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Let's go to Dr. Peter Wanigman. Hi, Igor. Um, I got a question about the bluefin. I did really kind of recognize that they maybe could do, maybe what I'm hoping is I do packaged care programs in which their supplements, their labs, everything's included in the price that they're paying up front. And then I have to manage that on the backside through a spreadsheet and it's just a monster. You know, cookbooks and then the spreadsheet, subtracting it and everything. And it's all, you know, outside of the charm system. Is this something that the Bluefin little dealio that you kind of, uh, charm does set up, billing packages, if you can set up. All right. So is that what I'm talking about as a billing package? Yeah, yep. that's what you're talking about. That's the billing package. Who that was the new future. Who do I reach out to to, like, articulate exactly what I'm trying to accomplish? It sounds like you're saying yeah, Justin's saying yeah, but boy. <laughs> well, it's it's here under settings. Oops, it's under settings uh, in the. It's right here, billing packages, and it gives you uh, a whole series of options. Um, that's when you. Can you share um, your screen? Oh, is it not shared? No, it's your face. It's right under settings. Yep. Um, billing packages under billing. Yeah, I saw it's that. It's a new feature, and it does require, it's an upgrade. It's a paid uh, functionality. Okay. Do we know how much? Uh, I'm sure it's under, on their pricing, okay. pricing page, or Justin might be able to answer that quickly. And, and that will be able to integrate then with my inventory. So if I select something from my inventory, it'll come out of that billing package and... Or is it just encounters and visits? Uh, I think Justin's about to respond to that. Okay, I'll shut up. No, 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 no problem. I, it, I think it has quite a bit of functionality. I, I think some of what you're describing is, uh, I want to reiterate, when we have suggestions, 
they listen. And I think this was literally designed for, for these sorts of instances. And this is their newest feature that was released. Thank you. Sector Wanigman, let's go to Rebecca Shalev. Yeah, hi. Um, does Charm have any features to assist with running an online program? Like, you know, for example, a two month weight loss challenge with videos and documents and members and things like that? Hmm. Well, don't think of Charm as a, as a marketing platform per se, but think of Charm as your as a way to funnel or put people into your, um, into your practice management, right? So if you're doing, if you're doing actual telemedicine, uh, that's what Charm is designed for. So as I mentioned, and as I showed, showed my, obviously my screen is not shared, but as you saw my website, uh, people can simply sign up and there are ways to create a website that really gives you a way to nicely funnel people in there. Um, however, it's not really designed to be a marketing platform because remember this is, this is an electronic medical records. Um, but they do have a, uh, an app that they have released uh, a while back. And so there are certain features, uh, but, but it's by no means is it really designed to be a marketing platform. Can you can you conduct group visits over it? No. Yeah, I think that was sort of what you're because remember this is uh, a one-on-one -on -one visit, right? So if you're thinking of group visits, I would suggest a standalone Zoom, which is what we're using. It's the same idea. By the way, my website is built on Kajabi, and Kajabi gives you um, options to create programs and it's I, I I sort of integrate both of those if you were curious and it may be something you could look into. Thanks Dr. Shalev. Um, looks like we've got two more questions and then we will wrap up. We're just over the hour. So let's take Leora Moore's iPhone. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Um, I have a question about uh, when you're doing telemedicine and at the end of the visit you want to share your treatment plan or the patient summary, is it possible to share it before signing the chart or being done with the chart or does the, that have to be um, once you're complete with the chart? Uh, the visit summary will show up on the patient's side before you sign the chart. Um, the if you're thinking the way I conduct my sort of virtual practices, I don't use a visit summary. I like to have a treatment plan that's sort of like a, a standalone sheet. And I share that with the patient um, even before I sign the chart, which I do right after the visit. But that's all accessible through the, the, their patient health portal. Um, so, yeah. Okay, because we haven't been able to figure that out. Um, so we, we're trying to get most patients to sign up, actually sign up for the patient portal. Um, but then it, for some reason, uh, where we write the patient instructions, it doesn't let us share it unless we have completed the chart. Um, is that something we have to change in settings? Or um, like where are you writing the treatment sheet in order for it uh, to be shared prior to? Well, I, I have a standalone treatment plan that is within the document section, and I share that. Okay, so you're not writing it in Charm. It's a, it's a separate document that you upload into. So are you yeah. uploading it into documents in the yeah. patient chart? Okay. Yeah. It just, I just prefer my own branded look to it. Yeah. Okay. And then do you, in order, like when you go back to the encounters, then it won't necessarily be in the chart, or do you upload it into their chart? As no, well. I just leave it. I just leave it as a. You just leave it in the documents. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's, again, just to reinforce to everyone, uh, there are so many different ways to have your own workflow, and you know, we're all, we all practice stylistically differently, and I think that's the beauty of it is you can pretty much adapt it uh, to any shape or form that you like, and also uh, one of the questions I noticed is. Do I um, help clinics still? Uh, yes, I do do that independently. 
um, and it has nothing to do with Charm as a company. I represent myself just just so that you're all aware of that. And yes, I still do help and have continued to do so. Um, Karen, okay. one or two more questions? Is Looks that... like we've got one, one more question from uh, Mika Bassett. Hi, I am just, I, I signed on late and I was wondering what the, that high capacity scanner, uh, you mentioned that right, right as I was tuning in. Scan snap. Thank you. And, and there are different, you know, models of it. Uh, I think I paid 419 for it uh, eight years ago. And it's still awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody, for your great questions. Thank you, Dr. Schwartzman, Ranjani, Justin, Kathy, Kate, everyone who's contributed to this webinar. We really, really appreciate you and are so grateful to have your energy here today. If you have additional questions after this webinar, again, you can email support at charmhealth.com or uh, email me and I will certainly forward your questions on to Dr. Schwartzman and Ranjani and whoever else might be able to help.